turn your your microphones on, please. Please shut your cell phones to mute. If you would, time being six o'clock, I will call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call, please. Dan? Here. Wanda? Here. Don? Here. Joe? Here. Sherry? Here. We do have a quorum present. Uh, item number three, does any commissioner have a reason to abstain for a financial, financial or a non-financial conflict of interest? I do not. None. No. I do not. No. Uh, item number four is approval of the agenda. Move approval of the agenda. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Fox, to approve the agenda as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Agenda is approved. This is the time for public comment. Would any citizen care to make a public comment at this time? Public comment is closed. Item number five, approval of the September 21st, 2021 meeting minutes, and I will abstain from this. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Fox, to approve the minutes for the September 21st meeting. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 4-0. Uh, item number six, claims. I had one question under uh, legal fees. Uh, I don't have it up right now, but there was one fee for like $13,000 to a firm that is not a usual firm. Olivia Miles Holtz. That's that. page, it's on page four. Isn't that that firm out of uh, Sioux Falls, I believe? Well, the firm's out of Sioux Falls. I just don't know what it's for. Oh, Oliver Miles and Holtz. No idea. Do you know? That I don't know. I, I know it, that's the one that on, on their side. But no, this what? is the one that we said hmm. they agreed to pay way back and they took it to, I took it to the Supreme Court before my time, but I think that's it. I think you're right. No, no, it's I over know. the definition of a bracket. I, I, I guess I'd like to know. Uh, uh, follow up. I, I'm not opposed to paying the bill presently, but I'd like to have a follow up on what the purpose for that bill is. Or do you want to approve them all with the exception of that one until we know what it's for? That would work too. That would work I would better. make that motion. Okay, so I have a motion on the table to approve the claims except for uh, the legal claim of 13,000. 875. 875. 875. 80. I, I'll second that motion. So the motion's on the table for the discussion. Again, the motion is to approve all claims except for the legal claim of 13,875.80. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. September payroll. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Clemish to approve the September payroll for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. We have amend the 2022 annual budget. It's 
So there was a email, um, um, general fund taxes. Oh, the general fund taxes should be stated as $6,702,231 and historical sites should be 108,832. I'm not sure that was in our packet, but she did email that out. So we need a so we do need a motion to approve the following correction corrections to the 2022 annual budget. Move approval. Second. So I have a motion by Kettering, second by Fox to approve corrections to the 2022 annual budget in the amount of general fund taxes, $6,702,231. And historical sites, $108,832. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Unanticipated Revenue Highway Department. So we have the Boy Scouts of America for $13,112.76. And that's just a pass-through thing, isn't it? Yes. Don't they usually go through emergency management? Just yes. wondering why this one went through the hike. The, 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 the picnic reason. shelter thing went, the storm shelter okay. went through emergency management. <clears throat> yep. So this must be some work to a road or something out in that area. I'd move approval of the anticipated revenue in the amount of $13,112.76. Second. So I have a motion by Healy, second by Clemish, to approve the unanticipated revenue. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. We also have unanticipated revenue for the sheriff in the amount of $2,986. And that looks like an insurance claim. Move approval. Second. So I have a motion by Clemish, second by <clears throat> Kettering to approve the unanticipated revenue for the sheriff. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. And the last item under number six is Native American Day holiday. And I do believe um, Mr. Hunoff is here. Oh, gosh, sorry. <clears throat> Come on up um, if you'd like to say anything. This is for a request to make this a holiday this year, an official holiday. Can you hear me? No. I don't think you're there. should be a little face. button. Maybe we're unplugged. There you go. I had oh, mentioned perfect. in um, that email, you know, that the banks are closed and the state offices are closed and almost all other counties are closed, but I actually left out the most important point. But Yankton is one of the counties with the most, uh, the greatest Native American heritage and history. And it's really an important way to honor the Native Americans. That's all. Okay, thank you. Any comments on the request? When we reviewed the employee handbook last year, we did choose not to include this one as an official holiday. And I think this would be just a, a small token of appreciation, you know, for what the county team has done working through the pandemic. Uh, there's not a lot of extra cost giving a holiday. Is it just for this year or for just, every year? This motion would be just for this year. If we want to do it every year, we actually have to amend the handbook. No, oh, I was just clarifying. Yeah. Yes, I'd make a motion to... Um, give the uh, day off for the county for Native American Day for 2021. There's a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. Any further motions? I'd make a comment if I can. You bet. Just uh, the point is that this year or every year, I, I would assume it would be every year. And so I think it should be addressed in the handbook um, added and one removed or simply added. But 
when we went through the handbook, the intention was here's all the holidays. I think we had input from department heads on such. So, any other comments before we move forward? <clears throat> so, there'll be no vote on that. All right, item number six is closed. We will move to item number seven. Mr. Paul. Good evening. Good evenings. Uh, the first item that I brought forth for you today is the, the, South, the, the LEMPG. That is actually the federal grant that helps assist pay our, our salaries, our travels, some of the other businesses that we do. Uh, this is an annual. We've done it every year, uh, but they renew it. And we, I kind of dropped the ball. It should have been last month, but they said we're good. They know we're a good county for it. So I just need a motion to go ahead and approve to go back into contract with the LEMPG for 2022. Okay. Okay. And this is the one that pays half your half salaries. Our salaries. Yes. Yep. Move, uh, make a motion to approve the contract. So, so I have a motion by Clemish, second by Healy to approve uh, the agreement with the state of South Dakota for Office of Emergency Management. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Cool, thank you. Approved. You just need the one. Just signature. the one signature on that particular one. Uh, the next thing, item I have here is that we want. Can we comment on that? Oh yes, go ahead. Sorry. You, you know, if you look through the next forty some pages of this thing, there's a heck of a lot of reporting and monitoring. Who does that? <laughs> and what's we, the follow up? We we're required every quarter to submit the documents that are required in this book to what they call Web EOC. It's a secure website. The state reviews it to make sure it starts at the regional area, to make sure everything that we're supposed to be doing is done. And then it's sent on to peer for final approval. So if we miss something, we don't get a document put in. Uh, we don't do, we have to go cover, do it in meetings with you guys, uh, meetings with the communities out in you know, different areas. Uh, we have to do that to make it up so that we can get our quarterly payment of what we submit in. And then we do it. There's a form called an 8521, which is where we put every document of like my salary, Aaron's salary, travel, anything like that goes on it, then it's submitted for reimbursement and we get half back. And with this now September over, this is actually starting the new fiscal year for the federal government. So our all of our final paperwork has to be done by the end of the month to get our final check uh, of the last two quarters. That answer your question, Don? Item 22 terms. By accepting this agreement, the subrecipient assumes certain re administrative and financial responsibilities. Failure to adhere to these responsibilities without prior written approval by the state shall be a violation of the terms of the agreement, and the agreement shall be subject to termination. How do we know that everything's being taken care of? If there if something isn't done. In that quarter, Sherry will get a letter, and so will Patty, stating that we didn't fulfill our duties in that quarter. So the state is our supervisor. Yes. And Paul, this is the same agreement we've done for many, many years, and and half of your salary and Aaron's salary is covered by this. Come, so come by not this. agreeing to that, then the county would have to pay the other half of your right. salary Correct. and Aaron's salary. Correct. So. And, you know, and they, 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 they verify, I mean, that's why, and the state's been really good. If we miss something, they want to make sure, because they also get audited by the federal government because they get paid a certain amount because they actually have employees that work for the state that are under the same contract uh, at the state level. So we want to make sure that all the monies keep flowing to the state as much as possible. I'm certainly in favor of getting the money. I just, okay. I didn't want to get caught up. No. Nope. And we were, we're, we're I don't want to brag, but we're one of the few counties that get it done on time each year because, or each month, because there's a lot that needs to be done. And it's just, you know, we download all the meeting minutes that, so we can show that we were here or if we were in another community or if we were at this training or if we, whatever, you know, we did the exercise here over the archery tournament. That's all being put in. So they show we actually do stuff, you know, the, per, the PDM plan that we'll be talking next, you know, we had to do all that. And that's part of the requirement that we do uh, in that process. So. Thanks. You betcha. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Okay. All right, go didn't, ahead. Didn't Aaron, Aaron get an award too yes. recently? Uh, 
Uh, our deputy emergency manager, uh, Aaron Hatcheski, recently got an award. Yeah, she well got for, it. Uh, for... She was nominated for the, the South mm -hmm. Dakota Achievement Award mm -hmm. uh, this year. Uh, so we, we were real happy to see that. And then our office got the collaboration award from the United mm -hmm. Way, uh, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool also. So, but, you know, but anyway, yeah, it's striving thank, to make it better. Thank you. Yes, and thank we you appreciate for... uh, that. Yeah, I'm, good opportunity to um to tell the community about the positive things mm -hmm. and, and that your department and, and Aaron were recognized. That means a lot. So yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, to go on, I don't want to be the one holding up the meeting all day long, but the next one is the resolution for the pre-disaster mitigation plan. Uh, most of you should, you should have got a copy of it. Uh, District three and our office have been working with uh, the Yankton uh, and the other communities to get um, what are some of the things that they need in case the, uh, something happens again, you know, what can we do to prevent it? You know, in our plan, we've got flooding and raising, you know, part of the roads are actually the road raising on what we're going to, you guys are going to be talking next is part of the plan. So we've updated it. We want to each community found out most of them are flooding issues. If you imagine that, uh, but how can we make it better? So we went through all this, we've updated the plan. That's 80 some pages long, almost 90. And it was approved by FEMA. And so now we have to approve, you guys have to approve the plan so that now it'll be uh, official. I know the city of Lesterville is approving theirs tonight and Gayville already has approved it. So, but anyway, that's next. Are there any? Oh, go ahead. Second. So I got a motion by Kettering, second by Healy to approve the Yankton County Hazard Mitigation Plan Resolution. Further discussion? And this is just to, to apply for oh, for one or to apply for one or which is the We've already got the plan. to prove that one. Okay. okay. No, that's not the oh, plan. That's not the one. So this that's is just a kind of what we do at the office plan. Okay. To a, okay, the plan got it. So this one was at our meeting a couple meetings ago. Yep. You know we've okay. seen that. Yep. So and this is and we we you guys approved it, so we sent it off to FEMA. Yep. And FEMA sent it back saying it's good to go. Now you just okay. need to make the resolution to make it. Okay. so that we can apply for more monies adopt it so, so we have to approve it and then go to fema and then we have to approve it again. no no this yeah. is it okay fema's right. approved it you're just now adopting it okay this resolution when we we can't adopt it till fema approves, approves it in case it. they make a change all right uh, now I understand. so the motion on the table is to approve the resolution further discussion all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. all opposed nay motion carries Resolution approved. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Um, yep. um, we changed it. Okay. Thank you very much. Paul, did you have anything to add for the uh, the FEMA for Stone Church elevation for the next yeah. item or? I'm sure there'll Case be questions. So okay, I'm not leaving. I'm going to hang around for that. Are you, are you I'll trying wait. to slip out of here? So I... <laughs> All right, item number seven is closed. We are now uh, item eight. Accept grant award for phase one approval, FEMA DR 4440 South Dakota HMGP Project 35R Yankton County Stone Church Road Elevation. And that's quite a mouthful. So this... Um, has been kind of going in the background ever since the 2019 flood. And after floods, you have the opportunity to apply for, for grants um, and funding to address issues in your community that you don't want to happen again, essentially is what this is. So it's a mitigation grant. Um, and we've been going back and forth with FEMA about how to handle the potential raising of the road that leads up to Stone Church Bridge, because we also know we need to replace the bridge itself. Um, and the county felt we could not wait uh, for FEMA to give some feedback on the whole project together, the bridge and the road. So we did proceed to um, do some engineering on the bridge itself, and we're going to apply for big grant funding there. Whereas this, is to study essentially what it will take to raise the road and the potential impact upstream. Um, so this is not actually to raise the road. 
This is a grant to study the scenario and the effects. And if we can raise the road without causing more negative effects in the long run. So Joe, did you have anything you wanted to add? Joe has been sitting through a lot of these discussions when we've been on the phone with the state team um, and FEMA region eight, is that right as well? So if you look through all that paperwork, essentially the, this study, this phase one study that is being presented is about $85,000. So it's $84,477.60. Of that, the feds would pick up $63,358.20. The state would kick in $8,447.76 <laughs> which means Yankton County share would be $12,671.64. So tonight what we're being asked to do, if we approve this, is the county is willing to spend about $12,000 to do a study on the effects of raising that road. So what are, uh, what's the gain and what's the potential downside? And if there is a downside, can it be mitigated so there, there isn't a downside, essentially. Paul, did you want to add anything to all of that? Or? The only thing that I have to say is that with all the meetings we've done, all the meetings that we have sat through listening with FEMA to get this accomplishment, I mean, because at the beginning, you know, any raise of water was a no. And by the explanations and everything that went on and with the engineering and the work that Mike done and everybody else communicating with, to me, this is a huge hurdle to get this project to move forward. So we'd be almost foolish not to do it, not because we did all the work, but we've got FEMA on our side right at this time. Yeah, there were, there were a lot of long meetings yes. and we had to change our strategy several times um, working with IMEG. They were on the phone, District 3 did a lot of, um, I don't want to say negotiations, but figuring out the best approach to, to try and get this bridge, if we put in a brand new bridge, we want it to be usable. And the people in that area want it to be usable. The huge part was the cost benefit analysis that this was created, uh, along with the engineer, to prove that this would be a justifiable. Correct. Yep, correct. So that's what we are being asked to approve tonight is essentially the expenditure of $12,000. $12,671.64 toward um, phase one of this project. Any questions on that now? When do they expect that it's going to be completed, the assessment? You know, I don't recall a deadline to get that done. This agreement is one year. One mm -hmm. year. Okay. Thank you. We have to have this done in a year, and then sooner than that, we we're hoping we get the big grant and if this whole project would be approved it'd be all done at one time because there's no sense doing a bridge and then coming back and closing a road to raise the road so that's and that was part of a lot of the negotiations too is is to try to get the timing correct Timing is difficult because the big grant comes through the state. This is coming through the Fed program, and nobody will pump the brakes for the other. Right, and if we do get the big grant next year, I believe we have three years to get that project done. Three years to spend the money. So, I, I once this is done, I would like an opportunity to uh, discuss in a meeting with the people who live up there because there is some concern, especially Stone Church Bridge, some of the farmsteads are pretty close to where it floods, especially the church. And I'd like to get some input from the citizens out there once we have, uh, once we have this study done. And I do right. believe that's part of the study mm -hmm. is to do all of those public meetings. Mm -hmm. So that would be, um, and much of this work is from the engineer themselves and they would be involved in that. District three. Any other questions or concerns? Entertain a motion. I'd move to 
to approve the grant and the amount of, well, I'll just do the whole amount, the amount of 68, uh, $84,477.60. Second. So I have a motion by Healy, second by Kettering to approve the um, grant application for raising stone, for evaluating the raising of Stone Church Bridge. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5 0. And we are a bit ahead of 6 30 because the next one is a second reading. So we have to wait for that. We have to wait for board of adjustment because that will be a specific time. Jessica, would you be willing to go? Item number 11, we'll go ahead and sneak that in. Great. Um, I'm here tonight to ask for um, approval and signature of a contract between Yankton County and Matt Archer. Um, Matt has thankfully agreed to come back and help us this year. Um, unfortunately, with the unexpected turnover that we've had recently, we've lost a lot of knowledge and Matt's willing to come back and show us how to um, extract data that we'll, we're gonna need in the upcoming assessment um, process uh, from our programs. And he's gonna show us how to, how to use some of those programs um, and do different things. So the contract that I'm looking for is, um, he would be done with part of the, the hours uh, this year uh, with a complete end of the contract, March 1st of the following of next year. Um, it would be $50 an hour, uh, not to exceed $5,000 total. I have the money in the budget. I'm not asking for more money. Um, we just need the training. And thankfully he's willing to do that. <laughs> Any questions on what's being asked of Mr. Archer or cost? All right, I would entertain a motion. So I'd move approval of the agreement between Yankton County and Matt Archer. Second. To have a motion by Healy, second by Kettering to approve the agreement for services with Matt Archer. Uh, hourly basis is $50 and not to exceed 5,000, essentially um, completed by March 1st, 2022. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you so much. Thank you, County Commission. Oh, does it? Does it say who has to? I can sign it if you'd like. Okay. Did you have a copy of that one for the uh, road? You got a copy? Thank you. Thank you. So we have to wait till about 630. Unless you'd like to, well, we've got five minutes. Any commissioner updates yeah, in that minute, time? Oh, that clock's, I'm sorry. That clock is slow. So we have one minute. Well, we'll wait one minute. Okay. If this zoning passes tonight, I'd like to get a new copy of the zoning ordinance book prepared and then distribute it and get it updated on the website after the 20 days with all the changes. Uh, 
uh, but the planning commission and then us as board of adjustment would need a updated copy as you well. want to do items for next week next meeting at six i think it's six thirty. so that clock's slow so it is six thirty now just a second All right, item number nine. This is the second reading of Medical Cannabis Licensee Ordinance 21-ZN-07. At this time, I will go ahead and take public comment. Would anyone care to make a public comment on the licensing ordinance for cannabis, medical cannabis? Please go ahead and state your name when you come to the podium. Hi, Ned Horstead with the Cannabis Industry Association of South Dakota. i uh, been down there here since this was first drafted, I guess, with the um, Planning and Zoning Commission. I think you've got a solid ordinance here. Uh, every one of these meetings, I got to say, not a fan of any sort of cap, but uh, I do appreciate that you've done much better than a lot of the other uh, local government entities that have been in front of at the city and county level. So um, appreciate the change to add uh, some sort of transferability. Um, or at least giving preference to someone if they want to hand their business off to their kid or, you know, another business owner after they get ready to, to sell. So uh, with that, I appreciate all your work on here. And I really like how the government operates down here in Yankton County. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments from the public? All right. At this time, we will close public comment on the medical cannabis licensing ordinance, bring it back to the commission for further discussion or motion. There were some changes made at the last hearing. So discussed. Discussed. They, okay. they were discussed, so they are in bold and underlined. Okay. Um, so I left the language in that we had at the first reading, put bold and underlined for language that we talked about. Um, as Mr. Horstead talked about, we did add um, that language about preference in the transfer section. Um, if you look at section 3E, we talked about allowing if they would apply in November or December, the way it read, they would have to reapply. So in section 3E, I noticed that we would have to exclude any license applied for in 2021 to match up with section 6E7, which says, however, any license approved in 2021 shall be effective and valid through December 31, 2022. And that was the language that Mead had. So given the fact that we're at the end of the application period, it'd be good for all of next year. Um, and then the transfer. And that was basically anything that we talked about at the first reading. Go ahead. Just, uh, yes, please. Uh, one, one question that I had on the um, licensing ordinance is it, it says that ap applications are first come first serve basically uh, to turn them in. So uh, just want a little bit of clarity around is that, you know, you pass it tonight, then there's a 20 day period after notice. Will there be something that says on this date, that's when applications will begin to be accepted or can people turn in an application tomorrow, I guess is the, the question. It, it says one, they can't turn it in before the state has finalized it. And then the second section that I believe I talked to the auditor about it says applications will be available after the effective date of this ordinance. Okay. So. And typically we publish when like an ordinance change, we'll publish that date. Yep. Um, what would be the date of that? If it gets approved tonight? Assuming it would be October 26th because today's the fifth. So 20 days, but. Well, the notice, um, it's Friday the 8th, next Friday the 15th. 20 days after that, so another one. Cool, thank you. So, thank you, it isn't. Are the commissioners generally 
um, good with the inclusion of the underlying language in what was presented? I am. Yeah, the, the only thing I came across, uh, section eight, uh, where we talk about shall comply with Yankton County Ordinance 2020, Article 14. I, I think a change that would be better there would just be shall comply with the Yankton County Zoning Ordinance and just leave 2020 Article 14 because we've seen how articles change and they get updated. When we update this with this zoning ordinance, it's not gonna be County Ordinance 2020 anymore. It'll be something else. So I think a more general statement would be warranted there. So just Yankton County's zoning ordinance. Yes. And okay. that way as changes happen, which they always do, it's, it's not. 2020 article 14. The references so, are wrong. Yes. Does that seem reasonable, Deb? I caught something else before that. Sorry, Jim. Uh, um, section eight signage and advertising, uh, section A. Okay. I would just say Yankton County zoning ordinance and not have county ordinance Current 2020 county article 14. Ordinance. Just make it more general. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Okay. And just so everyone knows, because I proof all the time, but I missed it. So it goes four is number of licenses, five is license fees, six is application process. Then I repeated six. So it needs to go seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 12, yep. 13. All right. So if we make a motion to approve tonight, that should be made with amendments discussed tonight, or should we include that all in the motion? I think yours, I wouldn't consider it being. No. Yours is kind of a typo, a typo graphical. So, so we need to include with the, with the, um, the amendment of changing essentially Article 14 to Yankton County Zoning Ordinance. And all other- in Section eight. And then just do, and all other- Underlying language. Underlying language in the second. Okay. So if, if we've got a commissioner who's feeling really bold tonight to get that, so let's let the commissioner make the motion. We'll make sure the motion is good before we second. So do we have a, a volunteer? <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're ready, Wanda. <laughs> well, I would move to approve the proposed second, the more proposed medical cannabis licensing ordinance in accordance with Yankton County zoning and all the emboldened and underlined items that are included in the proposed ordinance as well as dan's correction is section eight i think that was eight. the first part that was oh it was oh sorry the inclusion of the yankton county gotcha. zoning ordinance gotcha. sorry in section eight that we were adopting Correct. in accordance with it or if mr healy would I'll like to re-say it. it i'll second it Okay, so I have a motion by Fox, second by Healy to approve the medical cannabis licensing ordinance number 21 ZN07. And the words article 14 will be stricken and replaced with Yankton County zoning ordinance and all of the underlying language in the proposal will be included in the final ordinance. Further discussion? We'll do a roll call vote on this. Yes. Wanda? Yes. Don? Yes. Joe? Yes. Sure. Yes. Motion or ordinance passes 5-0. It will now be advertised for two weeks and take effect 20 days thereafter, tentatively November 4th, if all the publishing goes well. So we, for the public, uh, we won't accept applications until November 4th? Correct. Okay. So the public knows 
November 4th is the day. Correct. As long as, well, the state's supposed to have their stuff done by October 29th, I think. So, all right. Item number nine is closed. We are at item number 10, entertain a motion to go into Board of Adjustment. I would move that we go into Board of Adjustment. Second. I have a motion by Fox, second by Clemish to sit as Board of Adjustment. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Item number 10, uh, Sandra Pierce variance is she here? come on up. And would you introduce yourself and explain what you're asking of the commission tonight or the board of adjustment tonight? Good evening. I'm, we're Sandy and Tony Pierce. We reside at 120 Gavin's place at the lake and we are requesting a variance um, of our lot, or excuse me, to be able to build a garage onto the west side of our residence because um, the hardship is such that on the east side, we have utilities of water in that, uh, lines in that, so we cannot do um, any building on that side. And on the south end is our drain field. So the variance request is to um, be able to put the side of our garage um, five foot from our lot line. Change it. Can you change the picture? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna give you the picture just so you could see the, yeah. the slope of the property. Oh, there you go. Blue, they're hard to see the blue line. Yep. You even having to, to build a garage that's a fairly odd shape to conform yes. to that. So yeah. you're really putting in a lot of effort on this. So yeah. And um, mm. and then the very front yard is the septic tank. So it's been quite a challenge to be able to mm -hmm. figure out how to put the garage in there. Any questions from the commissioners of the applicants at this time? Bill, what is the zone currently? Um, R2. R2. This is a plot before zoning. Pre-zoning, really small. Really do you know how big that lot is currently? I think it's 50 by 100. Yeah, oh, it's pretty it? small because R2 is now is a full acre right. and you're probably substantially smaller than that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they're quarter of an acre. Okay. So, yeah, there's, yep. All right. You're welcome to sit down. We have to take some public comment. Thank you. At this time, would any citizen care to make a public comment on this variance application? There being no interest, we'll close public comment and bring it back to the commission for further discussion. You wanna walk through the findings? Sure. I'll move approval. Let's, let's walk through the findings first, Don, okay. just a second. Okay, so we've got uh, Applicants requesting a variance five foot to 25, uh, or a variance of 25 feet. Um, 20 feet, a variance of 20 feet. Because the isn't the, say a variance of 25 feet. Isn't 20, it's 25 foot setbacks. It's 30. 30. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, the planning found there was the hardship was not shared by other properties uh will not be detrimental to adjacent properties it's not for convenience profit or caprice um, it is not recurring sufficiently to provide a remedy with the zoning amendment uh, application submitted uh topography and size of the lot not applicable uh, to other land structures or buildings in the same district uh Previous variances to setbacks have been granted in Yankton County. This is not a result of the actions of the applicant. Um, no special privilege is being given. They were uh, 
non-conforming use was not considered. Publishings and mailings went out. Uh, public hearing had, was held at planning and zoning. Commit, uh, planning commission approved this 5-0 and use is allowed in that district. All right. Now move approval of the variance. I'll second that motion. So I have a motion by Kettering, second by Clemish to uh, approve the variance application for the Pierces. Further discussion? Yeah, for further discussion, I, I think this is an example of why the zoning ordinance gives us the ability to grant variances. This is a, an odd lot pre-zoning and it just makes sense to approve this variance. Uh, these individuals just want to build a garage so they can enjoy their property. There's none of the neighbors or the um, people who were notified are in here. Um, doesn't appear that, that any of the neighbors have a problem with this. And I think this is a good project and I hope it passes. Yes. They actually contacted all the neighbors before they knew they did go through this process and they were all in favor of it. So. Any other discussion? I'll say that I typically am not a fan of using variances. Uh, I think we do it improperly quite often, but I do feel um, somebody with a home or lot that was zoned pre, you know, their previous to zoning um, is something that was out of their hands. And so I would tend to agree that this would be a good use of a variance. Roll call vote, please. John? Yes. Wanda? Yes. Joe? Yes. Dick? Yes. Sure. No. Uh, variance passes 4 1. You are good to go. Thank you. So I need a motion to go back into regular well, before, session. Before we do that, I'm just I'm trying to understand. Uh, Sherry, are you are you just don't vote for variances anymore, or, or what's? I guess what which what type of variance would meet your standard? And if if the answer is none, that's fine. I'm just I'm it just would, curious. It would be darn few. And the reason okay. I say that is we know about this issue. This is mm -hmm. this lot is not the yeah. only lot out there that mm -hmm. has this issue. And if we want to truly address it versus just giving variances, as our zoning ordinance tells us we need to put it in the ordinance somewhere uh, to address pre-zoning lots. Brookings mm -hmm. County does it. And I've mentioned yeah. that before, but, but no one has shown any interest to actually fix the ordinance to address this style of issue. The other thing is mm -hmm. when we went through ag zoning, we changed the set lot line setbacks. We need to probably go back and visit all of these areas. Mm -hmm. And so that's my reasoning is we have the tools in place to fix this bigger issue, but we choose not to do it. Um, and I, I really think that's a great point. So you're, are you talking about adding a section in the zoning about pre-zoning lots? I encourage you to go out and no. read Brookings counties, how they handle that. And mm -hmm. if there are certain size lots, there are certain, certain differences okay. in lot line setbacks. So I think there's another way to handle this versus giving variances, which Technically, you can give a variance for everything out there. You can argue a variance for everything out there. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, and, and I think we get in a pickle in Turner County. If you ask their planning commission today, they'll say the hardest thing is to go back because they were given too many variances. And I believe it was the Supreme Court told them that. So I guess I'm just trying to, uh, you bring up some, great suggestions and we should really look at doing that uh, because we'll be in the situation where it takes four out of five to pass a variance and if, if, if somebody's gone in all likelihood that variance will be denied so it is something we should address and I, I guess uh, the place to start would be with the planning commission and let's bring those changes to make our zoning ordinance useful uh, and and so I guess people have clear expectations because the feedback I'm getting, you know, particularly with some of the variants, sometimes they're approved, sometimes they're not. And 
the public's perception, at least from my, um, from what I'm hearing is it's, it's pretty arbitrary. Um, I think I've been pretty consistent. You have, um, but consistently voting no, because there's an issue is I think a better solution would be to fix the problem with it. So that's just where I'm going. And that was encouraged. In and discussed it during mm -hmm. ordinance changes and nobody had an appetite to make the change. The, I think specifically the response was, let's just keep doing variances. And that's, I mean, I tend to agree it needs to be addressed. But I would disagree with finding too that the request of variance is not reoccurring sufficiently to provide revenue. I think it needs to be addressed. I'd move, uh, we come out of board of adjustment and into regular session. Second, to have a motion by Healy, second by Fox to go back into regular session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. We are sitting in regular session. We have done number 11. We are at number 12. And Mr. Billings? Oh, come on up then. I was, I was told Mr. Billings would be the lead on this. So we'll let you relax a little longer. <laughs> Trust me, he'd be the lead for sure. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank sir. you. Uh, I'm Dan Fox and uh, of Fox and Youngberg. Um, we have uh, had the contract for public defender services, indigent representation with the county since 1999. Um, you know, we're just in a situation, I think the, that the commission would be aware of. Um, uh, recently, I know the state's attorney's office came in front of the commission um, relating to some funds that were available in the American Rescue Plan Act um, for um, situations where court backlogs resulting from, you know, COVID related type things um, caused a backlog uh, in the court system. And, and that certainly happened here. I think uh, anybody associated with the court system could see that. I mean, there was a period of time where for approximately a year, there really weren't any trials going forward. And a lot of cases were continued. Um, in the meantime, of course, the usual cases continue to come in. And so there's certainly just a bit of a bottleneck that's going to have to kind of be worked through. And we're, we're seeing that. And I know that the commission um, approved uh, some additional funding from that American Rescue Plan Act for the state's attorney's office for a new staff. Um, and I think at this time, they now have three full-time staff uh, and one part-time. Um, and, you know, we don't handle all the exact same cases they do, but we handle a large majority of the criminal caseload. Um, there's certainly conflicts and certainly people that hire private attorneys. But then again, we also do some cases with the attorney general's office that's outside of their purview. Um, so what we would like to be able to do is to add possibly another attorney to, in the short term, to just get through this, this uh, bit of a backlog. And uh, I guess what we're really proposing is that uh, if the commission would see it uh, to be an acceptable solution, we'd ask for some of that funding from the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, and as I understand it, potentially that could go on for three years. Um, and so I think I would, we've decided that the way we would pose that is uh, pretty much essentially as the state's attorney's office did it, an additional uh, funds for additional attorney. You know, we, uh, we don't have anybody that we could say we have in mind at this moment because Without that funding, we're not really able to do that. I, I think the commission knows that uh, what we do, we're paid a set amount. Um, that set amount has not changed um, since 2016. Um, and at that time, you know, I had presented uh, information to the, to the county commission that showed for uh, people doing the same sort of work that we were doing 
with similar caseloads, similar numbers of felonies and misdemeanors, uh, that we were the lowest paid by a fair amount. Um, and I think it's safe to say that that continues today. And that's okay. I mean, we're not, we're not complaining about that. We understand that the county has a lot of demands. Um, I feel a little uncomfortable coming in front of the county commission and asking for more, more money when, uh, you know, there's issues with roads and so on. And so we really just haven't done that. We just continue to do what we do. But um, what happens is, of course, uh, like everybody, uh, we pay all our, <clears throat> we pay our own expenses. <clears throat> We're not provided health insurance. We're not, you know, et cetera. So all the overhead, we front that. Um, and so all those costs go up every year, you know. And so essentially we're falling behind a little bit every year. Um, so all we're trying to do is just get a little help to try to break that bottleneck. Um, maybe we can do a little more private work um, if we're not. I mean, we, we've gone from a period of time when we started with this contract where, you know, it uh, didn't take up nearly as much time. And now uh, I really don't hardly take any private work on. Um, I, I take some criminal cases because I'm going to be in criminal court anyway. But essentially, I'm not taking a lot of private work. And so, um, and I think that's true with Lucy as well. So uh, that's what we're asking. And if, if my understanding of this funding is correct, um, that's just something that could be accessed uh, governmentally and, um, you know, wouldn't cost uh, Yankton County. Um, and I, as I understand it, it is the type of funding that you, uh, if you don't access it, you, you know, you don't use it, you lose it. So anyway, that's what we're asking. Um, and what I would ask is I think with Yankton County, I think uh, uh, staff attorney position, I think was something like $63,000. Um, but I also would ask you to consider uh, the fact that uh, the overhead that we have to, to pay and uh, that we would want if we have another attorney come in to assist with that overhead. So I guess the request we're gonna make at this time would be for $75,000 per year for three years um, under the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, and we just throw that uh, open to the uh, commission for discussion and and uh, hopefully it's something that, you know, could happen. So I guess that's that's my request. Okay, at this time, are there questions? I don't think we're probably gonna make a decision tonight. This is probably something we need to investigate. Is there more information we need from the- You weren't uh, looking for a motion tonight. You're just bringing up a proposal, is that correct? That's true. I mean, obviously the best case scenario would be great if there, <laughs> there was a motion and that yeah. was approved. But I completely understand if uh, if you folks want to take a look at that and just make sure that that qualifies. Um, yeah. when, from my understanding of it, it would. But. When we were at the state convention, uh, our, our county commissioner association actually has a contract with uh, I Bailey. And when we have questions like this, they advised us to forward it to them and then they'll give us, okay, that, that will qualify or it won't and, and then come back sure. to us. So that they were very uh, very uh, sure that that's what the process you do just so we at the county don't end up having a bill that we thought would qualify and then for some reason it didn't because the, they're the experts. So I would, I guess um, I would feel comfortable if we go that route and check into it and, and see if something like that would qualify. And then we revisit this uh, at a later time with that. With that That's for you. I, I would think at the meeting in two weeks, we should be able to make some type of a decision on that. I would second that motion if it was a motion. Yeah, well, no we, motion, yeah, no motion. I, yeah, I don't think we need a motion. Or a, no, so. no, but, but I do highly encourage if you are sitting mm -hmm. here with questions about what their office does, what they're planning for this position, mm -hmm what the plan is after three years, et cetera, that you need to be funneling those questions to this law firm so that we are better prepared to discuss it next meeting. So one thing I had a question on with, with government funding comes lots of paperwork, of course, and documentation. Um, do you have a uh, 
trend of your caseload or any backlog that's increased due to you know COVID and court cases and can or could you provide one I guess because I'm know, sure we need to I, I guess we're going to be asked for where did we spend the money and why sure I guess the only thing I can say is that we're really in as essentially the same position as the state's attorney's office I mean we're handling those same caseloads to so to the extent that that has been approved is my understanding Mm -hmm. uh, we're really not any different than that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions at this time? Would it be difficult to update uh, four surrounding counties, five counties, on what they pay? Um, or can, similar size in the state? You know, what, I'll tell you actually have that information um you know i can now these are not necessarily surrounding counties these are counties if you'll remember when the state's attorney's office uh had their presentation uh, they went through and they looked at people with similar caseloads so they're not necessarily surrounding counties but they're um, different counties um, that have those things and so i will just i can show you and this you. is per month what they pay. And now they're all different because some um, have uh, multiple contracts. So, for instance, you'll see Brown County, um, they have contracts with seven different attorneys, is my understanding, or seven different mm. firms. So, um, that's different. Um, some of them are more straightforward, like ours, um, but that is, that is the, the deal. You'll see that uh, we are the lowest there, but um, and there's a few that are closer. We don't have figures for 2022 on, uh, I think, Union, but um, with the rest of them, we do. So that'd just give you an idea. Your current contract is how, when does that go through? Um, you know, it, we've just, it it's just rolling? extended because um, we've just continued. We don't have it for an X period of time. Okay. You know, we've always, in fact, I will just throw out to you for future consideration that, you know, this, it's really a different commission than when we did this before. Um, at one point, what we wanted to do rather than just wait an extremely long period of time was to sign a contract. And I know that we're not, right now we're not here talking about that because um, you've already done the budget for this year. So that's a future thing, but um, we had proposed before that uh, we enter into a longer term and with just smaller incremental increases so that we kept up um, rather than coming back and wanting you know, such a big bump and so uh, that's certainly something we'd be open to at any time, but, uh, but that's not what we're here for today. We just became aware of these funds and thought if, if those are available and that's something that we could do in the short term without costing the county any money, we thought that's something we'd try to do. Okay. Just a point of clarification, your county comparison does not include any of the other court appointed fees, correct? Just that, your office. That's completely true. Um, so you know, for example, this month, there was an extra $28,977.95 in fees requested. That's completely true. And there's other ones on that list that would be exactly the same because conflict of interest cases, as you know, um, are not, you know, they don't show up. So then those get farmed out. And what would the contract include? Does it include Yankton County mental health hearings or are those extra? No, we do those as part of our contract. Which, which is another point, I guess. Those other folks that are doing all those cases, because we're here in Yankton County, we do have the Human Services Center. So we do have those that we do in, in addition to the other things, which other counties don't do. But anyway, that's. I have another commitment I have to go to. So I'm sure. going to hand Joe, you're in charge. Okay. So I'm not moving. <laughs>
thank you for coming in. Yeah. I'll probably be shooting you some questions. Sure, no problem. So how many of those cases are left in your bottleneck? You know, I, I mean, I, I couldn't say that. I'm just saying that it's definitely more than there have been for a long time. There's a lot of cases I think you would know that would get continued from one stack week to the next and things just continue to add up. So, um, you know, I couch this in terms of COVID um, because it's certainly partly that. I mean, it's not only that, but... Um, but because that's where the funds are available from. So that's why we discuss it in, in those terms. So it's certainly part of the problem. Any further questions for Mr. Fox? Okay. All right. If that's it, Thanks. then I'll we'll Thanks, get back to you. Put it, probably put it on the next uh, meeting's agenda, but someone will let you know sure. for sure. Oh, okay. We should write that down now before we forget. Mr. Billings. Wanda, Don. <laughs> I'm John Billings, uh, I guess part-time deputy state's attorney. So uh, this is not the first time I've appeared before a commission about the public defender's contract. Um, just for a backstory here, I will tell you that I previously appeared probably five, six years ago where we tried to convince the commission that having a written contract that Dan alluded to was a good idea and no action was taken. And so I'm here again, really on my behalf and also Rob's behalf to here to support Dan and Lucy uh, and their request for the funds. And in my view, I would also support an increase in their salaries and funds just to raise their salaries. Uh, it's our view and my view of certainly that they do an incredible job with very limited resources. Um, you know, we've, we've had a relationship for around 20 years. And during that time, we've had very few headaches once the cases are completed, which tells you they're doing their job. And so they're not only representing the county, representing defendants, but they're protecting the county. And I think it's also fair to say our view has been they've saved the county a lot of money through the years when they've had special cases by just doing their work, not filing frivolous things uh, that didn't need to be part of the lawsuit or the particular criminal case. Um, I will tell you, I don't have any numbers for you, but I can tell you in that six year time, the demands on not only the state's attorney's office, but the public defender's office have grown immensely. Um, there's a change in the way courts conducted. There's a change in how much court we have. And that's in part because of the change in the judges we had. Uh, they expect a lot more from, I think our office and also from the public defender's office. Uh, and I guess I think the best example to uh, give an example of that is when you start getting emails at three o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning about court, uh, you know, things are different. So, uh, I, I'm here on behalf of myself and Rob and really request that the commission give their request very serious consideration. For a long time, they had three attorneys in their office and Lucy Leveno left to be Yankton County Mental Health Chairman. And how they've got along with just those two, it, it boggles my mind to be frank, given the caseload they have. And they've done a great job. And uh, I think it just helps the county. It obviously helps criminal defendants if they had another staff member and given what's happened in our office, I think it's appropriate. So thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Anybody else? Lucy? Okay. Okay, we'll close that item for this evening. Um, I'd expect some contact over the week and then we'll get you back on. Okay, thanks. Okay, that brings us to item 13, public comments. Does anybody care to make a public comment? Hearing and seeing none, public comments are closed. Any commissioner updates? Did you wanna go first? Go first, Dan. Oh, okay. well, I can go first. 
Um, I participated, I didn't participate, I think I volunteered for the uh, Hyundai Archery Association or the archery tournament that was the last two and a half weeks. And I think it, although the county as at large didn't prosper from it, I think Yankton, the city of Yankton did. And I think that the city of Yankton probably got quite a bit of sales tax from those archers that were here. And I think that the monies that the county provided to the NFAA for purposes of um, enhancing that program were well spent, at least as far as the city is concerned. They also got a few vaccines out of the deal. What? Some of the contestants got a vaccine out of the deal. I understood they had to have a vaccine to get on a plane. They had to have a vaccine to shoot, had to wear masks. I know my wife went and gave a few during the thing. That's all I know about it. So any more updates? Not for me. Don? No. Yeah, yeah I got a couple. Uh, attended the state's attorney open house today. Uh, thank you to the state's attorney's office, uh, Deb, Rob, and Tyler. And uh, it was a, a, a great thing that they did and I appreciate it very much. Uh, uh, we have the eight county meeting coming up on the seventh. Uh, I got an email um, from state association. I'm sure you guys got it too about I Bailey consulting services. And what I understand is that there is a fee that we would have to pay uh, at Yankton County of $2,000 to the association. And then we can utilize I Bailey. And tonight was a great example of, can we use this dollars? Can we use ARPA funds for this? And that's something we, I know we can't approve it tonight, but I, it's almost my opinion that uh, we could hold a quick special meeting to approve this and then start utilizing them. I know uh, at the state association, they were they were very firm, do not spend dollars from ARPA funds without consulting uh, because we don't wanna get in a position where we, we think it's covered and it's not. Um, in addition to that, I guess at the next meeting, maybe we should just discuss ARPA funds and our plans for them in the future. But uh, I would propose uh, that we use, we pay this $2,000, get Ide Bailey to start working um, with us on this before we have these guys come back because we won't have an answer for them by next uh, meeting unless we get this consulting fee taken care of. So that maybe maybe we should put that on our list of things to discuss, discuss right. for the next meeting. Yeah. Got it down. Yeah. Um, well, my, my only concern is if, if we don't, have this two thousand dollar paid i don't believe we can use i bailey until then but uh, uh other things i have uh, uh there was uh some good news uh, uh rural housing uh, the city of utica approved a new housing development uh so it's pretty exciting that uh, i guess my closest thing i have to a hometown is is growing and there's also a new house and going up in lesterville so that's uh that's good news those those communities have been not going up in population for a long time. And it's good to see growth in those areas. And that is all I have. Thank you. Uh, I do not have any updates other than eight, eight county meeting Thursday. And we are uh, hosting at Yankton. We're hosting, hosting it at Jodine's at 11, 12? Uh, yeah. uh, noon, 11.30 registration. <laughs> but what time for sure? Usually everybody gets there a little bit early. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 1130. If you Jody's. can't attend, if you told Patty you can and will not attend, let her know if you would, please. She sent Actually, let our office know. Patty won't be there. Okay. She had sent, did Patty's she get? Patty's going to be there. She had Patty, or Patty? Oh, I thought she was going to No. V Valley, have your speech ready. <laughs> your welcome speech. <laughs> oh, you have to. Well, you, um, you have to lead the national anthem. Patty She's Barbara singing. Yeah. Is, and Patty, Barbara, and Jessica are kind of going to go too. Okay. 
Okay, with that, uh, I'd entertain a motion to go into executive session for poor relief. I move we go into executive session for poor relief issues pursuant to SDCL 1-25-2 and 1-28-13 and 28-13-1.3. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We're now in executive session. Okay, microphone. I move on, we please. go back into executive session, or out of executive session Second. into regular session. Second. Motion uh, by Fox, second by Clemish to come out of executive session. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now back into regular session. I would like to make a motion. May I? Please do. I would move to pend the files CW21-065 through CW21-081 based on the following statutes. SDCL 28-13-1.3 sub 1, 28-13-34.2, sub 2, 28-13-3, 28-13-33, 28-13-1.2 sub 2, 23-13-27 sub 2, 28-13-27 sub 5, and 28-13-33. Motion to pend files. Is there a second? Do you repeat it? I'm just kidding. I'll second I, I that. I could if you'd like. <laughs> no. I'll second that. Uh, I'm, not sure. I'm not sure, but it, it seemed like in the fourth from the bottom, we might have said 28-13-1.2. 1. 1.3 1. sub 2. Sub 2. Okay. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion to pend uh, by Fox, second by Clemish. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Any items for next meeting? Um, we'll ID Bailey. look at the ID Bailey contract um, and either have uh, either have the public defender conversation at the next meeting or we can push that back. You know, I, I do. You guys got all got that email from Gary from the association about Yes. That I, you know, I, I know it's inconvenient, but if we could do a, a quick special meeting and authorize that, we could then have them start doing the research because it might take them a while to get back to us as busy as they are, as opposed to waiting two, two meetings. And once we approve it at that point, then they could start work and it might, it might be a month before they could get us an answer back that way. So I'm just, uh, I guess that's something we'll have to share with the chair, uh, yeah, I it didn't might, gather it that it was that a, urgent for well, I mean I know they want an answer, but the longer the longer we're in the queue, the you know longer it's gonna take to get an answer. Right. Uh, I wanted to on the next uh, agenda have discuss, you know, ARPA funds and what our plans are for utilizing those. I'd also like to discuss IT quotes for those who don't know. We're going to need a new IT service come January. A new what? IT service. Oh, okay. Um, uh, our current IT is uh, not going to be here anymore come January. So we need to. Uh, Where is he start. going? Uh, he's, I, I think he's retiring or something along those lines. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, regardless, we're going to need somebody else. I do have some quotes already, but that's something we're going to need to discuss. Okay. I have uh, five items I'd like to discuss next time. Yeah. Five. Yeah. You only get four done. Choose wisely. I, I think uh, we're, we're getting close to performance evaluation time. 
and uh, I'd like to discuss uh, the plan to have department heads get theirs done and us do the department heads and to know exactly what we're do doing, go over the form and maybe even have a, a training session for department heads and us. Um, I'd like to discuss uh, whether we're gonna uh, offer uh, the employees a, a holiday party uh, sometime in, in the year. I think it worked best after Christmas, the one or two times that we had it. Uh, I understand there's some action going on concerning possibility of some precinct changes uh, in how the state sets up their redistricting. Uh, redistricting. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yankton. Uh, I'm wondering Duke if we want to have some uh, discussion on that. From I don't what know if there's, there's anything we can do. But... Yeah. From what I was told, Don Yankton didn't grow enough. And so there, there's talk of either incorporating a portion of Irene or Tabor right now as the two main ones. Because I'm speaking with somebody who's on that. And there's also a meeting next mm -hmm. on the 14th, one at two in the afternoon and one at six in the evening in Sioux Falls at the Southeast Tech. If you want to talk to, show up and talk to anybody about redistricting. And then I think sometime uh, we need to uh, present to the public uh, a, a review of the COVID funds through all the different programs, uh, the money that the county got, how what we've spent of those funds and where it went to date and what future plans are for those funds. And then um, the reason that that's my fourth one, but I, I got a kind of a half a fifth one that <laughs> ties to that fourth one. Uh, I was approached by a yeah, employee of the county and uh, he said, uh, our department has been discussing uh, that the county has over a million dollars of funds that they're holding back that they're gonna pay the employees but they haven't sent it out yet. And uh, I don't know anything about that. That's well, mess. I'm aware, unaware of that as well. But I think it needs to be put out to the department heads uh, that because that's not a good understanding for employees. And apparently it's been discussed a lot. Is that something, Joe, you and Sherry, you guys are the ones who do department head meetings. Couldn't you put that out to them? I, are you guys still doing what do you mean put it out for the well discuss that oh, do discuss you guys still do department head meetings you were doing them like yeah we once a month or twice a month or something for a while. we were having quarterly i think quarterly. is what we've gone to how many employees does the county have 140 Roughly. with part-time just with part-time we have about 94 full-time about 40 Well, I'll pass this list on. I almost wonder if ARPA funds is, because I know, Dan, you want to talk about the same thing. ARPA funds, what's our plans, where are we spending? And I think it's good to update on what we have spent to. Yeah. I almost wonder if we should have a separate meeting sometime for ARPA. We could spend a long time on that. Well, a, a lot that of would those... be $7,142 a piece for that million dollars. Did you count me in on that? No, not me either. But uh, I can see where they're but, but eager back to, to that, get it. Yeah, the reason I said <laughs> that is, is some, that ARPA funding, I, I really think we need to get a, a plan together. And, and if we're gonna start using it, whether it be a, a sanitary district or, or um, internet or whatever, uh, need to start moving toward that because those funds are only available for so long and the longer you take it's you know there's there's some pretty tight deadlines there so well, and if we're not going to utilize it then we're not going to utilize it but my guesstimate is is that when the federal government continues to go down the rat hole they're presently uh, following uh, on financial spending that 
pretty soon there's going to be a lot of finger pointing and a lot of follow up. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. we need to use the funds and be very sure. careful. Well, I, and, and I Bailey is a great, great reason why we need to be utilizing those services. So. Okay. I don't think the pocketbook's going to be open forever. Any, uh, any more items for the next meeting? I move that we adjourn. Thank you. Second. Motion to adjourn by Fox, second by Clemish. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Here, I'll adjourn. <laughs>